This is the Integrated Math 1 practice test for Tea and Ready. Question number 15. That's the number on the 2019-20 edition. If you see this video and the title says something else, it's because they've used the same question over again, and they changed the number, and I'm not willing to reshoot something that's exactly the same just because of a number change. Unless it's in the question. But anyway, John has a goal to ride his bike 100 miles this summer. He's ridden 12 miles already, or thus far. There are 40 days left in summer. What is the average number of miles John must ride per day to reach his goal of 100 miles? So the average number thing here means we don't have to come up with some situation in which he rides 38 miles one day and then two other days he rides one mile. We're going to assume each of those 40 days he rides the exact same amount. I know there are a few ways you can do this. I'm going to set it up as an equation you probably can do it faster and not need to do that. And the question itself is not doesn't require you to set up an equation. I'm just going to show you the equation to let you know, like, this is what they were hoping you would do. So the first thing is my total amount has to equal 100 miles. This section over here has to represent all the things I add together to get 100 miles. John has two things to consider, or two streams of... Uh, miles that can contribute to this hundred. The first is that he already rode 12 miles. That's just 12 miles. It doesn't matter. It, nothing can change it. He's done 12 miles. So I'm just going to write 12 right there. The other part of his, this kind of allotment of miles that he can put towards this hundred miles would be the 40 days left in summer. So whatever that is, we're going to add that 12 to it to get there. Now, we need some situation where we can think about, well, how many miles per day does he need to ride over these 40 days? And the obvious thing to do here is to use a variable, right? So we have 40 days, and we're going to multiply it by whatever it's supposed to be. So say it was 2 miles. He'd do 40 times 2 plus 12. 40 times 2 is 80, plus 12 is 92, not quite 100. So this is not going to be 2. So we don't know what it's going to be, and when we don't know, we'll use a variable to identify it. Well, let's use M. It doesn't really matter. And now it's just solving. Um, the variables here, the 40 is closest to it. I always try to move the thing furthest away from it. So I need to get rid of plus 12. So you just do minus 12. And then you get 40M. And 100 minus 12 is, of course, 88. Now I need to say, well, it's times M. What do I do to eliminate? Multiply. It's divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 40. This is a calculator section, so if you don't feel like doing it by hand, you don't really require to. You don't even need a good calculator. Like, you don't need an advanced graphing calculator. Lots of calculators that don't do graphing are still good, but you don't need a fancy one. 2.2. .2. So the total number of miles that he needs to bike every day if he's going to do exactly the same is 2.2 .2 miles. So down here, in the space provided... I'm just going to put 2.2, as soon as I move that out of the way. There we go, 2.2. .2. And that's the answer. It's terribly written, number 2 there, but whatever. There you go. Could you have done that without setting up an equation? Absolutely. That's, I mean, likely what I would have done when I was in high school. I would have said, okay, well, he, I have to get it from 100. I know 12 is already out, so I'm going to do 100 minus 12. And then I'm going to break that up over whatever's left over 40 days and divide by 40. And you get da 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 2.2. It's the exact same thing. It's just this way is organized so I can visually see all the parts. This part is just I do it mentally and I get end up getting the answer that I want. Here's the thing. If you have time to go back and check, setting up the equation and sort of looking at it makes a lot of sense. Also, you could actually just check your answer if you have the equation set up. See, it's 100. If you don't set it up, it's harder to check your answer. And this isn't a difficult question. It's not, it doesn't take that long to get the correct answer. And you probably have maybe time left at the end if you're doing it in your head anyway. So go back and just take the time to write at least the equation out. That way you can check and make sure it's the right answer and get it. The thing that happens on the T and ready test every year is that people will go in and move too quickly and make little careless mistakes and their score will be lower than it should be. Sometimes to the point that it drops you to a much lower score, 
because you're nervous and you're not taking your time and whatever. Now you could have a timed situation in which you have to learn to balance that out. Same with the ACT. But in this case, if you just took the time to write the equation out and then checked it, it wouldn't take more than I'd say a minute and a half, two minutes, and then you could move on. If you have that time, use it. If you don't do what you have to do.